My next guest is Senator Shelley Moore Capito from West Virginia. She is the ranking member on the Senate Appropriations Committee Subcommittee on Labor, HHS, Education, and Related Agencies. Senator Capito, who served as a primary caregiver to both her parents as they battled Alzheimer's late in their lives, has introduced several pieces of legislation regarding Alzheimer's care and treatment. Welcome, Senator. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Well, let's start off with your personal connection. You cared for, for both of uh, your parents who had Alzheimer's. Uh, tell us about that, that process. Well, it, it's probably one of the most difficult and painful things I've ever been through in my entire life. Um, both of my parents, uh, it began with my mother more. Uh, she, you know, I can remember her telling me, uh, Shelley, I'm losing my mind. She knew it. She knew she was she started to really close in in a more gradual way. And my dad was caring for her. And then all of a sudden I realized my dad's not doing well. And it started, it probably started a long, uh, a long um, travel into just uh, uh, no man's land. It took about four years and they both passed away within three months of one another. Mm. And you know, when it says, when I say that I'm the primary caregiver, I was certainly the person who arranged for the care and and arranged for the payments and, and managed the household. But you know, it it is um, we had full time care for them. My sister and brother helped a lot, and and it was just really really difficult to watch uh, two really smart, loving, caring, great people just basically lose their minds. And what did you learn, Senator, just kind of on going through that process and the payment and the health care and the arrangements about, uh, you know, just about the, the health care system in general? Right. It's exceedingly expensive. Uh, you know, and, and most, at least for my parents, were bearing the personal cost themselves. Uh, they didn't have long care, uh, long term care insurance. And, and so, you know, it really, really was expensive. Because uh, we, uh, you know, had caregivers at the home for almost 24 hours a day, almost three years. Uh, and also, I realized there is not one book or one single thing that addresses what do you do uh, because it's different in each person. And my parents were were uh, devolving into dementia in, a, in in different ways, and and that made it. Uh, a real challenge as well. My dad up all night to my mother sleeping a lot. Uh, it just was, um, it made me realize that this is a very complicated disease and a big challenge for caregivers. Uh, and, uh, you know, so uh, I, I think I realized a lot of things there uh, that I hadn't really seen or, or heard, but it certainly has propelled me into wanting to be a leading advocate for not just finding a cure, but for helping our caregivers and all the great uh, breakthroughs that we're seeing here most recently. As I mentioned in your intro, you, you've introduced legislation on this, including the Comprehensive Care for Alzheimer's Act. What, what are the solutions that you think Congress should pass uh, to, to improve quality of life? Well, I think first of all, the early detection pieces earlier, maybe through your me welcome to Medicare physical or uh, in your annual physicals, where the cognitive questions are asked, uh, these are very difficult things for parents and and for husbands and wives and children to talk about with their uh, with their parents or their loved one. And uh, the medical professionals, uh, I think, uh, are, are difficult too because they rely on the families. And and so I think that uh, if it if it became a, a normalized part of a checkup as people age, I think it would uh, then help that health professional sort of chart the course. So that's one thing I think we can do. Another thing I think we can do is the research and development that we've seen at NIH has been phenomenal. But we've got to continue this. We're at the point now where we have medications that have been uh, FDA approved that slow or at least um, uh, hold back on the on the rapid uh, decline uh, in in um, in dementia. So I think we need to make sure that we're not just funding the research, but we also need to stay on CMS. We're having issues with this now with uh, lecanemab and uh, because it's been FDA approved, but they won't, uh, CMS won't approve it for, for Medicare for in all cases. And so, you know, there's, there's a lot we can do there. And, and actually in my home state of West Virginia at West Virginia University at the um, Rockefeller Neurosciences uh, Institute, we're doing some really breakthrough types of um, 
uh, interventions that I think are really going to be helpful in the end. Uh, and that leads to a reader question. Uh, this comes from Jennifer Burke, Communications Director for Partnership to, to Fight Chronic Disease. Uh, how can Congress shepherd the discrepancy between FDA and CMS when it comes to patient access and coverage for medicines that aim to prevent progression and greater impact of conditions like Alzheimer's disease? You mentioned FDA has approved uh, Alzheimer's treatment. They, they look at it from a safe and effective, but then CMS is, is uh, whether it's reasonable and necessary, uh, a number of, of people have been pressing CMS, a number of members on both sides of the right. aisle. Uh, tell us a little bit about that pressure. Well, we've definitely put the pressure on. You saw that uh, when the first uh, FDA-approved uh, uh, treatment came, came, came about probably about two years ago or a year and a half ago, and uh, CMS would not only would approve it for certain trials, it's difficult to get into, it cuts out rural. If, if all you're going to do is trials with these things, rural America is going to be left out. You, you, you're, you're not going to be included in a, in a trial. And, and that would cut out my entire state, uh, which means that uh, all of the, uh, you know, 832 people that died from Alzheimer's last year, but then the thousands that are diagnosed and the expense that the families are, are bearing uh, just continues on and on and on. So I, the pressures that we've put, uh, disappointingly, we, we questioned uh, the uh, secretary of uh, HHS to ask him to intervene. Uh, he didn't and wouldn't. Uh, and uh, CMS came back to us after the letter, the bipartisan letter that we wrote, asking that we have better consideration for this, uh, the, the lecanabob, which has just come out with some good uh, trials. And uh, they again refused. It's very frustrating, uh, you know, whether it's necessary treatment, but anything that can slow the decline or put you on a, a shorter uh, glide slope you know, as we're moving towards a cure, in my view, is well worth the money because it saves money in the end. People are more self-sufficient. They can stay home longer. They don't have to have round-the-clock care. Uh, all of those things uh, are going to be a money savings in the end to the healthcare system and the families. And, and, and then my next question about CMS, have they been, uh, have they told you why? I mean, there has been speculation that it's about cost, which, uh, you know, CMS should not be uh, looking at cost and its coverage determinations, but, but critics have said that. Well, I think it probably that bears uh, some of the reasons. Obviously, it, it is very expensive. It's priced. It's a pricey drug, uh, drugs. There are more coming on the market uh, as they complete their trials. And so that usually drives down the cost. Um, but, you know, if you look at the whole cost of, of you know, uh, a, a dementia unit, uh, my parents both ended up uh, in, in a dementia unit, and that's very, very costly. Uh, and if you have, happen to have early onset or something like this, this can go on forever, uh, you know, it, because your body's not aging, aging like your mind. And so anything that you can prevent that is on the, on the other end of the scale is going to save money. And we're never going to get there if we don't have broad acceptance of an FDA drug by CMS that has been proven through the trial process that, CM, uh, that FDA requires uh, that shows improvements uh, that would have some medical value to it, uh, you know, why they wouldn't, uh, this is a very unusual decision that they made and uh, they, they don't seem to want to come off of it. So I, I suppose price is part of it, but uh, I, I can't answer what the others would be, mm -hmm. except I will say this, Cognitive decline is probably much more difficult to measure and to quantify than, say, a broken arm or a broken leg or, or your diabetes, you know, because it is more difficult uh, in some ways sometimes to diagnose. By the time you diagnose, you're already, you know, kind of off the cliff. And that's why this early detection portion of what I talked about earlier, I think, is exceedingly important. Uh, as I mentioned, you're the uh, top Republican appropriator uh, on the HHS subcommittee. Uh, can that subcommittee apply some pressure? And, and also, uh, is there bipartisan support to, to fund uh, Alzheimer's programs uh, on, on the subcommittee? Well, yes, I think the, the members of the subcommittee and certainly uh, Senator Baldwin, who's the chair of that, and I are like-minded here. I think we will continue to put pressure 
particularly as more uh, treatments come on, uh, come up to scale and, and uh, bec- gain FDA approval. There are many things in the pipeline right now, so we can put pressure on there. Obviously, that falls, um, you know, the funding sources fall within our within our reach. And then if we pivot and look at over at NIH, we just had our hearing last week. Uh, pressed, I did, pressed on Alzheimer's and other neurological diseases and how important the research here is. Because I, I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but I have a gut feeling that if we can unlock the key to one of these neurological, uh, you know, with certainty, a neurological disease such as Parkinson's or something, it's going to have a lot of uh, residual benefits for other neurological diseases. And, and so I think we have to move forward uh, and, uh, and fund these uh, research efforts as, as robustly. So I was disappointed that the president's budget basically flat funded Alzheimer's research. And I think you'll find uh, in the end when we do our bill that uh, hopefully we can um, secure more funding for that. Senator Capito, very interesting and compelling uh, personal stories. Thank you for for joining us today. Thank you. And uh, I will say just finally that there's not a family in America that doesn't have a story very similar to mine. And that's what keeps me going all the time. Uh, But you can see my little pictures. I got lots of pictures of my mom and dad here. I miss them. And it was a tough way to go. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you.